Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. As you may know, I am studying a Ancient Egyptian Hieroglyphics course. Each week I upload a module telling you about what I've learnt. Last week I talked to you about part one of module seven, which was determinatives. Today I am doing part two of the determinatives module and yeah, let's get into it. So this section is all about the common determinatives. So, examples would be rain from the sky. This was very popular to represent rain, dew and storms. As we know from previous modules, water was such an important thing, especially the rain to the Egyptians because it helped fertilise the land and also encouraged the annual flooding of the Nile, which was their most important time of the year. You then had the papyrus scroll, which um, represented writing to teach and knowledge. Um, as we know from and also previous um, modules, it was only a select few that were able to actual write hieroglyphs and um, they were viewed as very wise. Um, and it was in quite interesting because also a star would also um, represent teaching. Um, I mean, I suppose when we think of it, it's almost like star pupil. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to look into more about how a star represents teaching. Um, obviously, um, boat on water was very important. Um, this was to represent just a boat to sail or to travel but also we know that during the afterlife they would travel by boat to the underworld um, it was a big part of their final journey um, legs were a common determinative these represented walking journeying traveling or even to just come near um, bird pecking fish um, this obviously represented fishing and obviously was a big part of um, men's occupations. A lot of them were either farmers or fishermen. You then had um, a quail chick with a sickle and this actually meant soldier. So again, that's another one I'm going to do a bit more research on. Um, then you had the sacred ibis on standard and this represented the goth Thoth, who we know created the hieroglyphs. You then had the scribes tools, so these represented the scribes themselves or to uh, represent writing or to write. The scribes were the only people able to do the hieroglyphs, so um, yeah it was quite an important hieroglyph back then. Um, the hieroglyph for house was used quite commonly. This was also to represent, that, to represent building. Obviously they did a lot of building, whether it be homes, temples, pyramids, anything um, that contributed to their culture. Um, and then tree was a really common one. Um, this obviously just represented tree, fruit bearing trees. So. Um, it could have been their occupation, whether they were a fruit farmer or um, obviously we view trees as um, life-giving so um, you know rebirth, re-nature, it was an important part to the ancient Egyptians. Um, so yeah that was quite interesting. Images of gods and kings as determinatives so many gods had their own individual imagery. Um, symbols of kings or deities were placed alongside names and other words depicting royalty. This added great emphasis. As we know, it was all about being extra. Um, each king wanted bigger and better than the last. Um, so these hieroglyphs would include seated gods, um, seated kings, seated king with like a scepter, um, even the king wearing the crowns that represented either upper or lower Egypt. So 
it showed their position. Um, but even like the um, men and women that were living there were also big determinatives. Um, they were very two common hieroglyphs. Um, as stated in a previous module, there was 55 hieroglyphs representing man alone. Um, pictures of men were used as a determinative to note gender, social status, age, occupation or characteristic. Women um, hieroglyphs were used to reference gender, occupation of either a mother, a wife or a queen, and as a support to men. So you really see um, the submission of women and the lack of opportunities that they had. It was, if you were a woman, you stay at home and look after the family, or if you were lucky enough, you were the queen of Egypt. Um, but when these were used together, um, this denoted people or mankind, especially if they were added vertical, with, sorry, if they were drawn with added vertical strokes, which indicated plurality. So I just did a little example I know it's not a hieroglyph man and woman, but if you see them, they are great detail and I am no artist, I can assure you. So um, my little stick man and woman will have to do. But um, yeah, if you had a man, a woman and then three vertical strokes, um, that would mean a group of people. Um, so male determinatives that were quite popular or common, shall we say. Um, where if a man was seated, this would represent a man and his work. So you would have a man seated next to a hieroglyph that represented what he did as an occupation. Um, a man carrying a basket on his head, this was to represent a carry, a load, a work. Um, if a man was slumped in a hieroglyph, this was to represent tired or even weak. Um, man dancing was dancing joy we um we well i watched you may have done i don't know um there was actually a documentary and the egyptians loved to dance especially when they had festivals towards the gods there was dancing was a really big in like um important role it was showing honor to the gods by dancing so that was quite cool um if a man had a um, his hand to his mouth, then this would represent eating and speaking. Um, if a man had raised arms, then this was to represent worship, begging, prayer, and even hiding. Um, and then a man with a wall, um, this was to build, to found. Um, again, that building was a really big thing back in the ancient Egyptians. And then female determinatives, there was the woman seated, so this would show female gender or feminine activity. Um, a woman pregnant, so represented pregnancy to conceive. Woman giving birth, giving birth. Um, a woman breastfeeding, this represented a nurse. Um, and a woman wearing a crown, which was the queen. So yeah, you can really see um, the difference between a man's role and a woman's role between the glyphs. Um, yeah, so most of these are self-explanatory. Um, others were used with an accompaniment of a specific female and male image. Um, so you would have, say, um, a male and a female um, and depending what the um, accompaniment uh, glyph was, it could be uh, mother and son, it could be son and daughter, um, and yeah, so it really turns on like the grouping, you have to like match it up, um, create that story in your head of, okay, this is what I know, this is what that means, and then decide what the meaning is behind it. Um, so yeah, I've really enjoyed this module, um, definitely one of the harder ones I would say. Obviously these videos I've condensed everything as much as I can to make it simpler. Um, 
but yeah, I have an assignment to do um, this weekend and then next week I will be going on to module 8. I cannot believe it, I'm almost on module 8 already. I've only got 8, 9 and 10. Um, yeah, this course I'm really enjoying it. Um, I'm loving what I'm learning, there's some things that I recognise from like documentaries I've watched growing up and then some things that are completely new to me and that's amazing. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching, um, I hope you've enjoyed, I know if quite a few of you have followed me um, from the beginning doing this course, so I really appreciate your support. Um, do hit the subscribe button, the like button and leave a comment down below, any questions that you have about this I'll be happy to answer them and I will see you in the next one, bye!